hi guys and many thanks for joining me if you are new to my channel hi my name is Kat and I like to talk about crimes investigations missing people conspiracy theories and everything related now if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and uh, also make sure you turn that notification bell on so you are the first one to know about any new videos i upload and for my subscribers i would like to thank you so much for all the support you're showing me and for all your lovely comments now before we get started with today's video disclaimer i do not mean to be disrespectful to anyone i talk about in this video and the video is for educational and entertainment purposes all the information that uh, i have in the video is collected from the internet and put together as a compilation so i can give you the content of the video and you are free and welcome to draw your own conclusion from this thank you in today's video i want to talk to you about the 48 questions that uh, kate refused to answer in her interrogation dated 7th of september 2007 okay guys i know that by that point kate and jerry they were both advised by their lawyers not to answer any questions because at the point they were made argued those suspects so if we put to aside the fact that any lawyer would um, advise not to answer any questions when someone is a suspect it is my opinion that kate's lawyer knew of her guilt and the best course of action would have been for kate to refuse answering questions her lawyer possibly knew that the police is trying to get the confession out of her and so I think that the lawyer was in fact scared that she might be the one who will crumble and confess. Does it make sense? Kate has been interrogated for 11 hours and out of the 49 questions she was asked, she only answered one. And I think it's much easier if I just start with the one question that she did answer and then we'll get into everything else into more detail. So the question she answered are you aware that in not answering the questions you are jeopardizing the investigation which seeks to discover what happened to your daughter and Kate's reply was yes if that's what the investigation thinks I don't know how this answer looks to you but to me it looks like complete and utter arrogance simple as that it's like she would say oh you know what whatever i don't care now i want to ask you my viewers is this the answer of a mother who would do anything to get her child back yes i understand that they were suspects at that point but why not answer if you would help the investigation into your missing child unless of course you have something to hide and you choose to save your own skin instead of finding your daughter i think in my view that is the only possibility and i want to ask you something guys if you are a mother or a father and your child goes missing would you really refuse to answer questions which can help find your missing child i i for one i would answer it even a million questions if needed and even more if that's what it takes to get my child back i wouldn't care in the least about anything else apart apart from that apart from that all i want is my child back right so you you know you hit me with as many questions you want i don't care if i made a suspect i don't care about anything apart from finding my child and it's just answering some questions which can help the investigators to get closer to the truth and in the end if if your child goes missing that's what you want to find out what happened with the child okay here are the 48 questions on may the 3rd 2007 around 10 o'clock in the evening when you entered the apartment what did you see what did you do where did you look what did you touch kate has said this so many times before as many times as she could to people to neighbors to family to uh, the media publicly in her book everywhere she could like a really well rehearsed story but yet on this particular occasion she's refusing to answer now the next question is did you search inside the bedroom wardrobe to which she replies she wouldn't answer again it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever if indeed bear with me if indeed they are not guilty of anything 
In my view, this is a simple enough question to answer. It's nothing out of the ordinary. For the next question, she is now shown two photographs of her bedroom and being asked. I'll put the photos up on the screen as well so you can have a look. Can you describe its contents? And of course, there's no answer again. So it's clear from the photos what contents they are in there. I mean, they are the the best ones to say what was in the wardrobe and taking into consideration that the photo is right in front of her, it shouldn't be really difficult to answer this one. But again, she refuses. Next question. Why had the curtain behind the sofa in front of the side window been tampered with? Did somebody go behind the sofa? So I'm guessing if indeed it was Jerry who got rid of Madeline's body and staged an abduction in the apartment, obviously she wouldn't uh, answer so she doesn't incriminate him. Maybe perhaps if she would incriminate him, he would spill the beans as well if she accidentally killed Madeline. So so basically they they would probably turn, turn, turn on each other, turn against each other. But I think they are really way smarter than that. Next question. How long did your search of the apartment take after you detected your daughter Madeline's disappearance? Here we have another refusal, another question where she just doesn't answer. Next question. Why did you say from the start that Madeline had been abducted? You see, the police keeps pushing her and I think that they believe she would be the first one to crack. Next question. Assuming Madeline has been abducted, why did you leave the twins home alone to go to the tapas and raise the alarm? Because the supposed abductor could still be in the apartment. Yes, of course she didn't respond to this one either. But this is a part which I really do not understand. Let's say for a moment that Maddie was indeed abducted. Hold on, I'm just trying to make a point here, so stay with me. Eh? She realizes Maddie's gone and with the twins in the room, she goes back to the restaurant to tell their friends that Madeline has gone missing. This is really, really strange indeed, very strange. I mean, why not just, you know, shout from the rooftop and, it, well, in this case, from the balcony? Since, since you previously said that the restaurant was so close to the apartment and it was also visible from the balcony or, I don't know, you don't want to show from the balcony, then why not use the phone to make a phone call? I mean, I do know that they said they didn't take their phones with them at dinner and they left their phones in the apartments, but surely the restaurant must have a phone and she could have just picked up the phone call, the restaurant, the restaurant will give the message to the friends. But... But why would you leave the apartment where supposedly Maddie is, is being abducted from and the twins are still there? I mean, what was the difference between Maddie and the twins that you believe that Maddie was not safe but the twins will be safe? What if the abductor will still have been in the, in the apartment? Next question. Why didn't you ask the twins at that moment what had happened to their sister or why didn't you ask them later on? Now, on this question, I confess I have to disagree. You know why I'm saying? Because I don't think you can actually is expect um, a two-year-old or such a young uh, toddler to truthfully reply to that question, to if you would ask them the question, or perhaps they might not even have an understanding of what the question means. Or, or they might not be able to say. They might not be able to express themselves. I mean, seriously, on this question, I, I really don't agree. I don't agree with, the, with uh, the police on it. Let's go to the next question. When you raised the alarm at the tapas, what exactly did you say and what were your exact words? Again, of course, Kate refuses to answer. Let's move on to the next question. What happened after you raised the alarm in the tapas? This is one of the questions that would have been so easy to answer and quite possibly truthfully uh, because everyone knows and everyone knew that 
everyone there was looking for Madeline. But but of course she she didn't answer to this one either. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Why did you go and warn your friends instead of shouting from the veranda? This is exactly the same point I made in the previous question where she could have very easily just go on the balcony and shout as loud as she could and if indeed is as they say that they could actually see the balcony from the tapas and the other way around then she would have been easily heard by the friends at the tapas restaurant but yet again Kate refused to answer next question who contacted the authorities so again it's common knowledge who did this so I don't see why you would refuse to answer this question I don't know I really don't next question who took place in the searches and yet again some very basic and straightforward questions which don't imply anything but she's still not answering. Next question. Did anyone outside of the group learn of Madeline's disappearance in those following minutes? Let's say for a moment the McCanns are telling the truth of how he went. As far as I am aware, Rachel Oldfield, uh, now according to their statements, went to the resort's reception at the bottom of the hill to raise the alarm and call the police. So. Yes, again, this would have been a pretty basic answer, yet she's not answering. But uh, hold on a second, I'm wondering here, why didn't they call reception on their phone rather than Rachel Oldfield going to the reception herself? That's really, that's strange. Hmm. Okay, next question, let's move on. Did any neighbor offer your help after the disappearance? So, again, let's go to Mrs. Fenn's statement, the neighbor from above. At around 10.30 in the night, she offered uh, Jerry help and even uh, she even said to him that he can use her phone to contact the authorities. And this, uh, in fact, came after she asked Jerry what happened, to which his reply was that a child went missing this to me even now i just i can't get over it i i just can't get over it why would you say about your own daughter's disappearance that a child has gone missing was it not your child who's gone missing i don't know and then as we know murat came into play when he offered to translate between the police, neighbors and the McCanns. Weird enough, although Jerry denies it, they seemed to have known each other before Maddie's disappearance and as one of my viewers mentioned, it's quite possible Jerry agreed with Murat beforehand to act as the translator so they would have somewhat complete control over what's being translated and uh, what information is being passed on from one side to another obviously this was at the beginning before everything became a bigger a bigger investigation i'm talking about in those particular moments and for all we know murat could have uh, could have very easily alter what was being translated from both sides to suit their own story. I mean, who knows? I'm just saying. But of course, this is another another question that Kate refused to answer. Right, and before we move to the next question, yes, be because I was mentioning Murat right now, my next video is going to be precisely about Jerry's and Murat's relationship. So, if you are interested in that video, don't forget to keep watching and hit the notification bell and you will know when the, that next video is up. Moving on. Next question. What does we let her down mean? In my view, and this is strictly my view, this can only mean they let her down because they left the kids alone, being negligent and selfish. They just wanted to relax on that holiday and, you know, just 
get rid of the kids, whatever, I don't know. But if you want a holiday and relax and enjoy without the kids, why take them with you? I don't know. But in my view, if you go on a holiday as a family, you are all together, but those kids were always dumped in crèches, in these uh, activities, in these activities. And even when they were together, they were together for very little time when the kids were getting ready for the bath and then they were having their sleep routines and then in the morning before going to breakfast. That's just, that's just a fraction of the length of a day. So, you know, why did they take that holiday? They took the holiday to enjoy themselves and as a family, that's not a family holiday. If you take your kids on holiday as a family, you just enjoy your time with the kids. That's what a family holiday is. Of course, this is my opinion. Now, there's another thing that this can mean. Maddie is sedated by her parents. So, she sleeps and has an accident whilst looking for them in the apartment, which leads to her death and they feel guilty. This can be another variation of it. Or Kate somehow got fed up and angry at uh, Maddie's tantrums and um, shouting, so she just can't take it anymore. And she snaps, somehow injuring Madeline in the process so badly that it leads to her death. Or there is also the other possibility that it can be Jerry who lost control and hit Madeline somehow and um, he, that led to her accidental death. I mean, anyway, this is strictly my opinion. Obviously, we'll never find out, not because Kate refused to answer the question, but because indeed, if they are guilty, they will never confess to this. That's it, never. Moving on. Did Jane tell you that night that she'd seen a man with a child? Yet again, according to the group statements, we all know that Jane Tanner allegedly saw a man carrying a child which looked very much like Madeline heading into Murat's house direction. But as another viewer of mine mentioned in one of my previous videos comments, which even I'll confess, even I didn't know, it seems that Murat's daughter, she looked very similar to Madeline, like, like she would be Madeline's twin. So hear me out. Say another theory. What if Murat was involved in helping Jerry get rid of Maddie's body in the blue tennis bag, which I mentioned in my previous video, and to keep up the rules and also to match the timeline, he in fact carried his own daughter in his house. If she did look like Maddie's twin, it's quite possible that she was confused with Maddie. And this is if we were to believe Jane Tanner's statement. Next question. How were the authorities contacted and which police force was alerted? So, Rachel Oldfield went at the bottom of the hill to raise the alarm and she contacted the police. We know this, right? Everybody knows this, but of course she didn't answer again. Moving on. During the searches, with the police already there, where did you search for Maddie? How and in what way? Actually, I read this in quite a few places that uh, Kate did not participate in the search. She was just sitting down on her bed in the bedroom whilst everybody else was looking for Madeline. And uh, as far as I'm aware, Jer Jerry and the others were looking uh, underneath cars, in beans, like everywhere they could outside. But my question is, why didn't um, Kate join the initial search? Was it because her guilt was too much for her to handle? And uh, she knew that Maddie won't be found, so she saw no reason to keep up the farce. Next question. Why did the twins not wake up during that search or when they were taken upstairs? Hmm. Now, this is a very good question indeed. Of course, Kate wouldn't answer this one. She, know, she knows very well 
in my view, and of course she won't incriminate herself. The twins, as I believe, were obviously sedated, hence they, they slept through all the commotion and the moving as well. Next question. Who did you phone after the occurrence? I'm not sure that Kate called someone after it happened. It really does slip my mind right now. But I think that Jerry, in fact, called his brother, who in turn called Gordon Brown to ask for support in the case. And why do you think Gordon Brown got involved? I have an idea. <clears throat> A theory, an opinion, some information. Gordon Brown is allegedly a Freemason and he and in fact his name is James Brown and he took the name Gordon from his uncle's first name who is or was I didn't really look much into it who is or was also a Freemason and I'll show you why I believe this look at the photo now pay attention to the center of the photo, yeah, at the handshake at his and his fingers. <clears throat> and do you know who is the other person? This is Mervyn King, the governor of Bank of England. And now look at this. Another photo there. This is a photo of the real grip of a master mason. Now, how is Gordon Brown connected to the governor of Bank of England between 1999 and 2002 Brown sold 60% of the country's gold reserve when the price of gold was at the lowest and that price was the lowest it has ever been in the last 20 years at that date which was $275 per ounce by May 2006 prices reached $700 per ounce. If Brown had waited, he would have raised 4 billion pounds for the public. Jerry McCann allegedly is also a Freemason and there's further information that he is. Check this out. You see those flowers? Yeah, in the photos, they have a message there. For the McCann family, our prayers are with you. Grand Priory Knights Templar. And Knights Templar are affiliate of the Freemasons. I don't think I've ever seen... Okay, my, my opinion. When you have a missing child and you're a normal person like each and every one of us are, you don't just get bouquet of flowers at uh, what is this a memorial stone or something yeah i think it is you don't just get a bouquet of flowers from the nice templars from the grand priory no you don't now what i want to do is i want to read you an excerpt from the handbook of masonry and this is from page 183 you must conceal all crimes of your brother Masons and should you be summoned as a witness against a brother Mason be always sure to shield be always sure to, to shield him it may be perjury to do this it is true but you're keeping your obligations Okay, I won't carry on on, uh, on this uh, Freemasonry subject, but I think so far you get the idea, right? Being in the same circle as Freemasons, they really need to help each other, including in concealing crimes. So, I'm wondering what other crimes have they been concealing? Hmm, big question. But, again, is it possible? Do you think it's possible or is it just me and I'm maybe I'm reading too much into it now let's move on to the next question did you call Sky News 
So I think all of the above must be somehow connected. The news outlets were all present on the 4th of May, early in the morning, next day after Maddie's disappearance. Even more interesting is the fact that the Daily Telegraph posted an article about Madeline's disappearance one minute after midnight. <laughs> oh my God, one minute after midnight. The same night that she allegedly vanished. So how did the outlet already know that she was missing? It was one minute after midnight. So if we are to take into account the timeline, as they say, so they found out that she was abducted at 10 o'clock in the evening and this article was published at one minute after midnight, which is two hours and one minute later. So how did they, how did they find out so soon? How? And I'm gonna pop uh, the article on the screen so you can check the timeline on this one as well. It says they are last uh, updated at 12.01 a.m. on the 4th of May 2007. I, I actually uh, circled the date here so you can see the date and the time. Now, let's move on to the next question. Did you know the danger of calling the media because it could influence the abductor? We know that Kate and Jerry McCann were, were told on numerous occasions not to contact the media, media because it, would, it might endanger Madeline. But did they listen? No. Next question. Did you ask for a priest? And the plot thickens here. The priest. Hmm, the priest, the priest. I think, and this is my opinion, Kate confessed to the priest what happened. Now, we know that when you, when you make a confession to a priest, it's confidential. So, she probably, she may be, cons um, she might have confessed and then maybe they paid him and also, it's quite possible that he helped them get rid of Maddie's body. I mean, uh, this could be another theory. And as far as I understand, there was a lady who was supposed to be crema cremated. I don't know if he was on the same day or, or at a later date. So it's quite possible that uh, they put Maddie's body in the same place. And if it's true, by any means, they'll never be able to find her or they'll never be able to find any evidence of her. I also read that this priest at one point was saying that he will take Kate's confession to the grave. This would potentially explain why the McCanns had the keys to the church. Otherwise, why, why would you even have a key to a church or for yourself? I don't think anyone gets a key to the church no matter how faithful they are. Okay, moving on to the next question. By what means did you divulge Madeline's features? By photographs or by any other means? Of course, Kate didn't answer this one, but again, I'll give you my view. I also found some info on the photographs. It seems that a lot of the photos given were photoshopped. Some say that the girl in the photos is not even Madeline. That's how much they got edited. I'm not getting into any more details. Maybe this is uh, one for a future video. But anyway, why was so difficult to answer this question? You know, but she didn't answer. Next question. Is it true that during the searches you remained seated on Maddie's, on Maddie's bed without moving? I already made sort of a point uh, in uh, the previous question that she was uh, in the apartment and she didn't participate in the searches. Next question. What was your behavior that night? I mean, Mrs. Fan was saying in her statement that she heard the woman howling so hard and she remembers that she's only heard that howling twice in her life when two of her family members passed away. So that pretty much sums it up. 
Next question. Did you manage to sleep? If I remember well, they both said that they fell asleep in the early hours of the morning and then they woke up quite early as well so they can start searching for Medi again. Next question. Before traveling to Portugal, did you make any comment about a foreboding or a bad feeling? Oh yes, the bad feeling. Yes, yes, yes. Kate did say that actually. Like she didn't feel she wanted to go. I think that this was in uh, David Spain's statement. Oh, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, it was in one of the members' uh, statement, in one of the group's statements. Yes, it was. So she didn't really feel like she wanted to go. Or was it, or perhaps she was giving an indication of what might come out of this holiday? What do you guys think? Because obviously she didn't answer. So maybe I can get, uh, you know, your opinion on this. Okay, moving on to the next question. What was Madeline's behavior like? Yes, Maddie's behavior. We already know Madeline was a handful. I also understand that Kate was uh, struggling to cope with her and whilst Jerry would go on uh, weekend uh, business related trips, she would always have a family member with her who would stay in their house to help her cope with the twins at, and with Madeline. But I mean, a lot of people have more than one kid. Why, why wouldn't she cope? Was she depressed? Why did she need help? Is there a possibility that she might have been depressed? And also, another question would be, if she had difficulties coping with the kids, then why did she take all the kids with uh, them on holiday? Just a thought. Next question. Did Maddie suffer from any illness or take any medication? Now, I've heard some speculations around this, but I, I really, I'm not sure uh, what's true and what isn't. But anyway, here goes. Madeline, it's possible she might have had a condition which didn't have legal treatment in the UK. But they found treatment for her in Portugal, which... Something which was trialed, but not uh, so much tested properly. Is there the possibility that this treatment might have gone wrong and because of the illegal nature of it, they decided to dispose of the body? I don't know. Next question. What was Madeline's relationship like with her brother and sister? Well, brothers and sisters, I would assume they had a good relationship, but obviously I can't answer for Kate. Next question. What was Madeline's relationship like with her brother and sister friends and schoolmates? This is another question which Kate would know for sure, but again, she refused to answer. Let's move on. As for your professional life, in how many and which hospitals have you worked? I'm not sure if she did work in a hospital. I didn't really research uh, too much into it, but I know that she was a general practi practitioner in a practice. Next question, what is your medical speciality? We know from a, a previous video that she is a qualified anesthetist uh, which, um, and she specializes in pediatrics. Now, next question. Have you ever done shift work in um, any emergency services or other services? To which she didn't answer again. Did you work every day? As I, if I remember well, according to herself and Jerry, she only worked part-time. Next question. At a certain point, you stopped working. Why? Well, I think you, we all know why she stopped working, so I would rather just not comment on this question. Let's move on. Are the twins difficult to get to sleep? Are they restless? And does that cause you uneasiness? Like any other toddlers, I, I assume, not all kids are being angels when they have to go to sleep. So, yeah. Next question. Is it true that sometimes you despaired with your children's behavior and that left you feeling very uneasy? Again, Kate refuses to answer. Next. 
Is it true that in England you even considering handing over Madeline's custody to a relative? Mm, we've heard this one before. But if, uh, but if indeed this was true, this would contradict Kate's relationship with Maddie as positive and loving. I do remember reading somewhere she once told one of her friends you can have her. Now, I'm not sure did she really meant it or was it just a joke? But who knows? Next question. In England, did you medicate your children? What type of medication? We know they use scalpel for the kids to help them go to sleep. Even if they did use sedatives, I would think, as a doctor, she did have access to it. And she did have access in general to medication without accountability. I mean, I can't say for sure in uh, all the practices and hospitals and clinics throughout the NHS in, uh, in the UK. But uh, I know from my husband, when he used to work in a hospital, he had access to all the medicines uh, in their cabinets over there without any accountability there was never anyone who would ask him a question as to why he took that particular medication so it is possible next question in the case files you were shown can canine forensic testing films where you can see them marking due uh, to detection of the scent of human corpse and blood traces also human and only human as well as all the comments of the technician in charge of them. After watching and after the marking of the scent of corpse in your bedroom beside the wardrobe and behind the sofa pushed up against the sofa wall, did you say you couldn't explain any more than you already had? Yes. I mean, if we are, if you are following this story, if we are following this story, there's plenty of, um, I wouldn't say evidence or proof because I don't want to say evidence or proof. There's plenty of information out there, especially in the PJ files with a lot of photographs and a lot of forensic reports and, uh, and so on. So yeah, all the information is there. Now, the next question. When the sniffer dog also marked human blood behind the sofa, did you say you couldn't explain any more that than you already had? Again, we've seen the photos in the PJ files. We've read the dog's reports and so many other, other things and the statements and uh, we've we've read documents or so most of these things are already in the pj files they are for the public to look at so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, valuable information out there and of course uh, jerry's typical uh, ask the dog sandra or the dogs are not reliable yeah of course next question when the sniffer dog marked the scent of corpse or of corpse coming from the vehicle you hired a month after the disappearance did you say you couldn't explain any more than you already had i think that uh, both kate and jerry have said that that could have been from anyone who rented the car before they did so it's always there's always a sort of a justification for for you know each accusation let's say Next question. When human blood was marked in the boot of the vehicle, did you say you couldn't explain any more than you already did? Now, uh, I think uh, we know the story of the fish and meat in a bag in the boot of the car and the bag uh, leaked blood and that's how the, that's how the dog picked up the scent and uh, the dog alerted. But uh, the thing is that these dogs, they don't alert to meat or pork or whatever they only alert to human blood they've also been through extensive trainings and testings and uh, they very rarely failed if never so many cases based only on their findings convicted criminals but hey 
Jerry says the dogs are not reliable. Next question. When confronted with the results of Maddie's DNA, whose analysis was carried out in a British lab collected from behind the sofa and the boot of the vehicle? Did you say you couldn't explain any more than you already had? Next question. Did you have any responsibility or intervention in your daughter's disappearance? I think we know the answer to this already. Following Kate McCann's refusal to answer all these questions and after Jerry McCann was also interviewed by the police, the British government flew the McCanns back in the UK on a special EasyJet flight. From then on, any questioning of the McCanns was almost entirely under their own control. The Portuguese police had to go through British government channels to get permission to interview the McCanns and their tapas friends. The police's potential questions were vetted and approved by both the British government and the McCann's lawyers. The Portuguese police had to submit their questions in advance to uh, the Home Office for approval in what are called rogatory letters. I mean, whatever everyone's uh, opinion um, or view is on the government's uh, intervention, if it was out of the norm or not, the Portuguese police were heavily restricted in their investigation to, uh, to such a level that it actually suggests willful interference. In effect, let's say, the McCanns, although they were suspects in uh, Madeline's disappearance, they were throughout able to evade effective questioning. I think that innocent parents who knew their child has gone missing, they would surely and easily cooperate without reservation with the police and help them with all the information they could. Okay, so I'm finished with the 48 questions. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell because my next video is going to be about Jerry, McCann's and Murat's relationship. Thank you again so much. You guys take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.